Hi, my name is Sandy Baird. I'm a citizen activist along today with my colleague. I was going to call you my comrade, which is what I really think. But anyway, we've been colleagues for a long time. I'm with Jimmy Lease, Esquire, who's an attorney who's been involved with citizen struggles for fairness, health, safety, and freedom in our community for a very long time. He is, as I mentioned, an attorney, and he has been an activist in trying to get our city in Burlington and his own city, South Burlington, and also Winooski, to make some sense about the F-35s. Last night there was a big victory, and Jimmy has, was participating in that victory when the city council of Burlington voted 11 to 1 to kind of give a notice to our congressional delegation that it's about time that we thought about changing the mission of the F-35s and our airport into more peaceful pursuits. And Jimmy, congratulations on that victory. I do want to, before we begin, ask Jimmy, what is his background and when did he become involved in this issue and so forth. So maybe, Jimmy, you could tell us a little bit about that struggle with the F-35s. Okay. So the F-35... What is it? It's a big, fat plane, right? Y yes, the F-35 is a fighter bomber. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's capable of dropping nuclear bombs as well as conventional nuclear. bombs and missiles. Mm -hmm. And you can pack it up with tons of this weaponry to be dropped on uh, military targets or civilian targets, mm -hmm. as has happened in past U.S. wars. So is it different than the F-16s, then? The, yeah, it's supposed to be more advanced in that it has stealth capabilities. Stealth? So it's got a coating mm -hmm. on, it's, ma it's mostly made of or largely made of plastic. So the F-16 was an aluminum body. The F-35 is a carbon composite, military carbon composite kind of body. And people are familiar with carbon composites because many things nowadays, like tennis rackets and parts of cars, are made of these carb carbon composite materials. And then in addition to that, so that lowers the radar reflectance of the airplane. So you, it's harder to see it in radar. Ah, so that's why it's stealth. That's what makes it uh -huh. stealth. Uh -huh. And then they also put a coating of s some other material that they don't disclose what it is. Uh, but we do know that if, if the airplane crashes and burns, all of these carbon composite materials emit all kinds of poisons, poisons. Mm -hmm. carcinogenic, toxic, uh, it goes to the next generation and generations after that. So it's very, uh, very bad if you're in the neighborhood when one of these what is the neighborhood uh, goes the down. Well, the neighborhood is the airport itself. Uh, our airport. Our, Yes, mm -hmm. so it, a lot of, a certain percentage, like maybe a quarter of the crashes that military jets have are on takeoff and landing or in the vicinity of the airport where mm -hmm. they're approaching or taking off from. So it isn't all of them, but it's a substantial fraction. And so what, they, what these airports, military airports have done, have had extended areas on at each end of the runway that are, that are supposed to be clear of any kind of civilian or any kind of structures. Uh -huh. It goes uh, quite a distance from the ends of the runway in both directions because they can take off in either direction and land from either direction. Uh, at civilian airports, that area is much smaller but since our airport has both civilian uh -huh. and military, they don't make they don't make an they don't expand it right. for our airport for the military jets. So our um, accident zone at the ends of the runway is not equal to what it would be at an air force base. So this is a, this is a real danger here. 
uh, that it extends, that there's structures, there's residential housing in, in Williston. A lot of that has been removed, too, hasn't it, the residential housing? And no, wasn't... no, not from the ends of the runway. Okay, right. But... Okay, so in South Burlington, because of the noise of the F-16 using its afterburner, uh, they removed some 200 houses on 44 acres. And those 44 acres remain vacant to this day. Is that right? Yes. So well, they can't be rebuilt, right? Oh, yes, they can rebuild there, but only if the F-35 departs and we no longer have that extreme noise. Now, the F-35 is actually significantly louder than the F-16. Yeah, the F-16 had to be using its afterburner to approach the noise level of the F-35. Mm -hmm. So on an equal basis, with both of them flying with the afterburner off, the F-35 is about four or five times louder than mm -hmm. the F-16. It's at about 115 decibels. The F-16 was in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So on takeoff at a thousand feet uh -huh. elevation if you're standing below it as it's going over you. And that's how the military, right. that's how the military do, does, uh, explained it in the environmental imp impact statement. Mm -hmm. So to, what happened was the uh, commanders of the Air National Guard here. In Vermont. In Vermont. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to be located far away where the only females would be the cows. <laughs> okay, they right. wanted to be Home. In near, this, near a city, near culture, near education, all the different things you benefit from, the hospital, all the things. From the, being near the city. Being near the city. Uh -huh. and, and from a human relations or what do they call HR point of view, you, how do you attract people to join and be a participant in your business or in your military is by being in a place people want to be. Uh -huh. So this is considered convenience, not military necessity. For any military operation, any military operation, there has to be a military necessity, especially if they're going to be civilians impacted. Mm -hmm. Now here the civilian impact is severe. Huge. It's a huge, right. and they're doing it, they say, because of convenience. Who's they? Uh, the uh, uh, adjutant general was interviewed, mm -hmm. and it's and that adjutant general of the state of Vermont, correct? The state. Of, yeah. He's the commander right. of both the army and the air national guard. Here's the overall commander of both. The army in Vermont. In Vermont. Yeah. Okay. So that's a state agency. Mm -hmm. The army and the Air National Guard are both state agencies. They report to the governor, mm -hmm, mm. except when they're called up for right. federal service somewhere else, somewhere outside of Vermont. So Which can happen. And they have been called right. up. When we had the F-16s, they were called up multiple times to serve in Iraq or in Afghanistan. But weren't they called up to be in Honduras or Central America at one point when Madeleine Kunin was the governor? Yes, yes. And she for, for fought it. She tried to fight it. That's right. And, and the Supreme Court uh, overruled, her. overruled her because they were called up for federal service. Right. And in that case, they're under the command of the president. Whereas oh when they're training in Vermont, they're under the authority of the governor mm -hmm. and the adjutant general and the wing commander for the Air National Guard. So, and those are all, uh, all the members are operating under the auspices of state, of the state of Vermont. Uh -huh. So the state, according to this is all in the Constitution right. of the United States, the training of the National Guard in those days, they called it the militia when they wrote the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But the training is under the state. Right, exactly. And the um, the arming is under the federal government. So Congress has the authority to arm the National Guard. But for the training, so that so arming the National Guard, right. 
th that's, we've been calling that basing the F-35. Uh -huh. That was a federal decision to base it here. That's the arming of the National Guard with a weapon. What mm -hmm. is that weapon? The F-35. So they decided it was the federal delegation pressuring the Air Force. Federal delegation is what? Okay, so our federal delegation is our two senators and our sole congressman. And so they got us the F-35. They pushed for it. Okay, and, and the, it was not the current delegation. Well, the current delegation has one change. So back in 2010 to 13, when this decision was in okay. process and finally made in 2013, we had Senator Leahy and Senator Sanders, and then we had Congress. Did at that point Senator Sanders yes. was also in the Senate or was yes. in Congress? He was in the Senate. Okay. Um, and uh, we had Congressman Peter Welch. Correct. Okay, so um, now uh, Senator Leahy has retired and we have uh, Peter Welch is now the senator and we have a new Congress person Becca Ballant. Correct, right. Okay, so th this, cha <clears throat> this change opens up the possibility of something else happening. And this is what the resolution that was adopted by the city council last night really uh, was about. Okay, well, let's get back to that. So let's, the delegation at the time was Senator Leahy, Senator Sanders, and Peter Welch in Congress, correct? Correct. Did they all want this project? They were in lockstep support. They all um, must have decided that they wouldn't meet with citizens. They decided we that, never, correct? They, right. I don't, we never got to meet with right. any of them about right. them. The only one who may have had a meeting, and it may have been by telephone, w was uh, Ben Cohen, who had a conversation with Senator Leahy, I believe. Ben uh, Cohen of Ben and Jerry's. Of ben and Jerry's. Big donor, probably, right? I don't know. I think they've been either. friends for a long time. Yes, probably. We all were friends at one time. We were all yeah. young lawyers. I mean, I'm sort of an acquaintance of Senator Leahy and Senator Sanders, just yeah. because we were all young together. Yeah, yeah, and and it's a small state. Yes. This is a minuscule right. state right. for two senators compared to, let's say, Texas or California, right. which has 100 times as many people. So we uh, we do get to know right. them on a personal level. So it is- But they would not meet with, I remember they that. Would not yeah. meet. And they wouldn't discuss it, but there was a very good reason why they couldn't meet. Because the, this basing of the F-35 and training with the F-35 in a city. I right. When you do it somewhere out in the desert or over the ocean, or so, that's different. But when you're doing it in a city, you're violating all of the principles that the military bases itself on. Like? Well, I mentioned military necessity, I mm -hmm. think. There's also distinction. Distinction is the clearest, because what it says is separate your military operations from populated areas. Exactly. Keep it separate, because the military operations can have terrible effects Toxic. on the civilian population. Right, right. The one that we most hear about is human shielding because we are, the U.S. is always accusing um, the Palestinians of using human shielding, right? They base themselves Am amidst the cities well, that's the and towns. accusation against the Palestinians right now. As right, a they're doing right. that now. So what's happening right here in, in the Burlington area? We've got the F-35 nuclear capable bomber, right? Yes. And it's in a densely populated area. It's a target, it's an obvious target. The Chinese, the Russians, anybody, the, the, per the Persians, anybody who is, who the U.S. is making into an enemy, a lot of if people, they a have lot the capability, right. they're going to worry about the F-35 because it's a nuclear-capable bomb. Okay, well, let's get back to that, because you were mentioning the differences between the F-16 and F-35. Isn't that an important distinction? No, the F-16 yes. is also capable really? of, oh of, of delivering nuclear bombs. Is that known to the public that now that we have bombers in our midst who are capable 
of carrying and dropping atom bombs. I don't know if it's really um, known to the public. Well, I think they've. Been, I think it's more recently yeah. that, that they've developed this this thing called the B sixty one dash twelve nuclear bomb, and it's uh, it is capable of being launched uh, from a jet fighter. It didn't have to be one of these big bomber planes. Uh huh. It used to be. I, used to. I think they were bigger. I, now, I'm guessing here. I don't really know for sure if they had these smaller 500-pound or 1,000-pound uh, nuclear bombs in the past. Mm -hmm. So that may be why uh -huh. we're, we're able, we, we're these uh, jets like the F-16 and the F-35, which, um, which are fighter jets, they're, they're not, they weren't considered you know, to be the, the main bomber force. We had the B-52 right. bomber. Right. That was the main right. instrument for delivering uh, nuclear bombs in the past, back, you know, in the 60s, 70s, 80s. And now we've got many more. Now in the future, it's going to be drones that are going to be delivering them. The, the drones that are delivering nukes? Yes, because the planes like the F-16 and the F-35 in the future will not have, have a, pilot. a pilot. They'll be drones, and they'll be able to to deliver. So and but they'll still be based here. <laughs> Is that right? It could be, it, if unless we are able to uh, to really uh, build a campaign to put a stop to this. This is this is wrong in every way from a legal point of view. So here we have two lawyers talking about this. Maybe we should touch on that. Yeah, go ahead. I mentioned distinction and military mm -hmm. necessity. There's also the, there's also proportionality. Right. So it, so you're not supposed to be hurting civilians. Exactly. And the harm you do to a to a civilian population or a civilian uh, object, what they call civilian um, infrastructure, uh -huh. just buildings, housing, houses, buildings, right, right. things that civilians mm -hmm. use. You are not allowed to damage that when you attack the enemy if the gain, the military gain from doing it is disproportionate to the harm to the civilian or the civilian infrastructure. So, so here there's no, there's no military combat. We're in Vermont. Right. There's not a single military objective to justify hurting the hair on the head of a single civilian. Right. It's disproportionate Correct. because it's zero military. There's no military necessity. For conquering Vermont. No, I don't see no. it. And right. there's no military objective except training. And you don't have to do training. In fact, you shouldn't do training. Among civilians. In a civilian right. populated area. So. The, um, it's disproportionate. You're supposed to have feasible precautions. You're supposed to t take feasible precautions to protect civilians before launching the military operation. Mm -hmm. So what would be the feasible precaution? Well, the Air Force and the FAA and the National Guard have been telling us about feasible precautions. They call it mitigation. Mm -hmm, right. But they haven't done it. It's been five years and it's- Has it been five years? It'll be five years in September. Mm -hmm. Next month is the five year anniversary of the arrival of the first F-35 jet. They arrived in September 2019. So here we are five years later Insulation, uh, noise mitigation right. hasn't been installed. No, is that correct? Because I thought that was a big deal that there was going to be that kind it's of It's going to be, but that's not taking the feasible precaution yep. first. Right. It's launching the operation and then saying, gee, we're not going to do it mm -hmm. ourselves, mm -hmm. the Air National Guard. Mm -hmm. We're going to leave it to the FAA to figure it out. And, to, and maybe you'll get the funding, maybe you won't. It's tough luck if you don't, see. But the, the thing is that I think is very important for people to really wonder about, and I, I am beyond wondering about this, and that is that 
One of the things about distinction is you're not supposed to target civilians, mm -hmm. intentionally target civilians. So if they come out, as has happened numerous times in this, uh, in this Palestine situation, mm -hmm. people come out with the white flag. Right? Oh, yeah. You're They're Israelis. holding a white flag. Yeah, Israelis have come out with white flags, right? That's right. They were those right. three Israelis exactly. who, who escaped mm -hmm. in Gaza. They had the white flag. You're not supposed to target civilians or people who, even if they were soldiers, but there's this word, war de combat, they've been wounded or there's yeah. something. They're not acting. They're not. Combative. They're not combatants for, the, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're lying on the ground wounded mm -hmm. and they're not anywhere near their gun. You're not supposed to harm them. Right. I, and yes. in fact, the medic, you're supposed to, okay, help if them. They, help I them, know. right? Yes. So, I watch MASH. Okay, so this is what is happening right here in Vermont. They're, they're targeting. Where? The, every time an F-35 takes oh, off, yeah, okay. the military knows this is hurting civilians. In terms of? In terms of this noise. It's 115 decibels, and that noise covers some 2,250 acres of land. It's an oval-shaped area centered on the runway. The runway is a mile and a half long. So, and then, and then the plane takes off and it's flying low, over Winooski. Oh. Uh, so this oval shaped area covers half of Winooski and a good part of Williston on the other side of the runway. So it's about five miles long and the noise is extreme about a half mile on each side of right. the runway. Right. So we have a one mile wide, half mile and a half mile, one mile wide, five mile long oval shaped area that's the most intense noise. Mm -hmm. And what the Air Force does is it gives you the number in two ways. They give you the instant noise that you actually hear. Mm -hmm. That's 115 decibels. Then they average it over 24 hours, mm -hmm. 365 days a year, even though they only fly 220 days. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of days where the, you know, if you've, if you've ever, if you uh, remember back to when you were in school, if you got a zero on a test, right. it really brought your average down. Yes, right. Right? So that's what happens here. They get the average down. And so now they call it 65 decibels, average uh -huh, noise right. level. So if you're familiar with these two numbers, you know the, the average is not what you ever hear. You mm -hmm. either hear no F-35 noise or you hear a lot of right. F-35. But, okay, so, but people, uh, th they do this averaging so it sounds quieter because a vacuum cleaner is way above 65 mm -hmm. decibels and we all hear that. But it's nowhere near 115 decibels, right. which is the actual noise level. Anyway, there is, the Air Force said there were 6,663 people living in this oval-shaped area. Right. And 20% of Vermonters are children. So that means 1,300 children are being exposed to thousands of takeoffs and landings of the F-35 every year of their life from the day they're born until they're, they finish high school if they mm -hmm. continue to live in that noise zone. This is extremely damaging to the cognitive development right. of the child, according to the Air Force itself. So the Air Force, the Vermont Air National Guard, the congressional delegation, the governor, everybody knew that this was going to hurt civilians, that this was and targeting and civilians. Children. And it was especially children with lifelong impairment. They did it intentionally. They what? did it knowingly, intentionally, willfully, and on purpose. The purpose must have been to harm civilians because they knew it was going to happen. Yeah, but that couldn't they be wrote the purpose, about it. could it? They wrote about it in the 2013 Environmental Impact Statement. Volume 2 is all about the harm to civilians. 
and they go through it in detail. The hearing loss, the cognitive impairments, reading, yeah. concentration, memory, and problem solving. They give the data. How could you then, how could you, how could you from the six years between 2013 and 2019, not say, you know, this isn't a good thing to do in a city. Right. The, right. the uh, Marines didn't do that. Mm -hmm. They do their training over the desert in mm -hmm. California. What is wrong with the Vermont I don't, politicians? I, 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 they must have intentionally, no, they use, this isn't they the don't first care. time. This isn't the first time. Uh -huh. they, they've used uh, Americans, uh, black people, They've used Native America. They've they've done experiments. Yes. This yes. there's a yes. long history yes. of harming civilians ja on Japan on purpose. Yeah. I can't. This this okay. If you can come up with a better explanation for why they would violate all the principles of military, uh, the, the, the fundamental principles that militaries all over the world are supposed to follow, and it's been brought into um, uh, the directives put out by the Department of Defense and you know there's international humanitarian law yes. that all militaries mm -hmm. but in the US they say we don't just observe this in combat situations we observe these rules in all situations, all military operations, that and that includes training. So, if you, this is, this is like military 101, to learn the fundamental rules of proportionality, distinction, military necessity. You know, it's so it's so elementary that you can't be doing it unless you intend. Now, if you look at the broader picture, we are seeing international law being degraded Everybody internationally. Might. Look, the U.S. is funding and arming the Israelis, even though we know that they're committing genocide. Right. They're committing apartheid. They're violating human rights. They're attacking civilian population in Gaza so brutally that they destroyed a huge proportion of the housing, of schools. the schools. Yesterday. It's like these military, it's a nightmare. these assaults mm -hmm. are unbelievable. So, so what's happening here in Vermont is that our military, our Vermont National Guard pilots are being trained to do what they're doing. So their training is to hurt civilians, well, now they can go off in the next U.S. war where they're called up to drop the bombs, and they're supposed to have been so well trained that they can drop them on Positions. civilian right. populations right. just the way the Israelis are dropping them on the Palestinians. And you could not rely, maybe that was the decision, you really can't rely on them to be willing to do that unless they've been trained for year after year or trained not At to least, care either. They're being trained not to care. Right. They're being trained to just think about other things. So, okay, but Jimmy, you've been at this a long time, obviously, and you have a great deal of expertise, and thank you for that. And thank you for being at this for a long time. We have had some victories against the F-35s, right. correct? Could you tell our audience what those victories are, how you achieved them, and then talk also about last night uh, here in Burlington with the city council. Well, I think the 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 victories that we've had have been in acquiring knowledge, really, and mm -hmm. mobilizing people, and developing a an educated populace. Mm -hmm. Back in twenty, in the when this was first announced as a possibility, and there was scoping to see where to base the F-35. Um, we were just beginners at it. We didn't really know how dangerous it would be, that it, that it would eventually become nuclear capable, and now it is mm -hmm. nuclear capable. Mm -hmm. 
the government has announced that all F-35 jets have been wired so that they can carry the nuclear bombs. Now, they're not going to carry them here. They'll be forward deployed, let's say, in Eastern Europe or in near China or wherever, wherever they want to use the bombs. That's where they'll be loaded up with the bomb. What's the point of carrying it across the ocean, right? So that we store these bombs there. The planes will go over and, um, and then be loaded with the bomb. But, uh, but the problem is we are a target. Mm -hmm. So why would, you, why would you put that in a city? That, you know, that. So it, there's so many things wrong with having the F-35 in a city. And we've gone over, and, then, and we've gradually developed uh, the knowledge and the understanding. And you could hear it from people. We had 30 or 40 people speaking last night. Right. The, the public forum lasted for 90 minutes. And during that 90 minutes, everybody got to speak a maximum of two minutes. So there, there were probably somewhere over 30, maybe 40 people spoke. And almost all of them were speaking against the F-35, and they raised all kinds of... The National of, Guard wasn't there? The National Guard wasn't there. You know, the National Guard has never really been questioned mm -hmm. about the military law. How could we not be questioning them about whether they're complying with their own discipline. They're not. They're just flagrantly violating their own discipline under the command of the wing commander and the adjutant general. These people should be held, these two people, should be held to account. But they aren't. But they're not. And four years ago, 657 Vermonters signed on to a complaint to the inspector general. It's the inspector general's job to make sure that the law is complied with, that the discipline is complied with, that they're not hurting civilians wantonly and just without a military necessity. And so, you know, during combat, it's but here we're doing a training in Vermont. No civilian should be hurt. So we filed a 62-page complaint mm -hmm. going through the facts and the law, both the military's own rules, Vermont law, <coughs> and federal law, mm -hmm. constitutional law, and international law. We covered it all in this mm -hmm. complaint. And we never got an answer from the in in inspector general. They just shelved it. They didn't do their job. Uh -huh. So we know that they can't answer questions about the, whether it's legal to be doing this. This is, this, is, this is such an abuse in every possible way to have F-35s based in a, in a in densely city. populated area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the most densely populated part of Vermont. Yes, of course, right. So. so I'm not certain how much time we have left, but I do want to ask you, so what happened last night at the Burlington City Council? Well, okay, so we had the public forum. The way Burlington runs its meeting, the public has, a pu has, right. has access to speak for the two minutes, um, and then... Sort of a blend between a town meeting and a republic. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But then the then the city council starts mm -hmm. to do, deliberate about all their items on their pre right. prearranged agenda, and so it wasn't until around ten thirty. Wow. Before they got to item seven point eight, which was the uh, resolution. the resolution that was put forward by Councillor Jean Bergman. Congratulations to Jean. Right. And so there was a lot of discussion from the counselors. There was an amendment uh, put on by... What was the re resolution? What was the gist of it? Okay, so the, the resolved clause... Mm -hmm. th well, I'll just say this. There were at least 30 or 40 whereas clauses yes. giving the facts. And it was a fant six pages of facts before you got to the resolved clause. 
and it went through a lot of the things we've talked about today, but also a lot of other things. And everybody uh, would benefit from reading that like resolution. To, yeah. uh -huh. It's really educational. Did you write it? Uh, no, Roseanne Greco, Greco from South. She used to be on the South Burlington she, City she Council. She was the chair of the South Burlington yeah. City when Council when all this struggle began, right? Right. And she was a military person. She's herself. she was in the Air Force right. for thirty years, and she rose to the rank of Colonel. Mm -hmm. So she was she really knows her stuff. Yeah, exactly. And she's very articulate mm -hmm. and very very capable. And so I think Vermonters. Um, are very proud of her exactly. participation all these years. Now, when she first heard about the F-35, she was a okay. supporter yeah, of right. it. And then she found, started to look at what the Air Force itself was saying in the environmental impact statement. And she read the whole darn thing and saw this is a nightmare for a city location. Just from the crash point sure. of view, this is where I think she How got stuck. How about started. for climate change? Okay, so for climate change, that is a tremendous defect of this plane. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get why the climate change people, why they've never really been on it, you know? Um, yeah, because I, I don't, I can't really, you know, it gets about a half a mile per gallon. Mm hmm. So? Uh, it's 20, it's something like 22 gallon. I forget, I, I did the calculation some years ago. I, it's like, it's so, such a phenomenal amount of fuel mm -hmm. that it burns. It's, it's all by itself. Right, exactly. It's, this, these training flights are vast uh, pollutants. pollutants. And, it's, and it's not just CO2 pollution. Yeah. Uh, at the height in, in the atmosphere, the water vapor, so when you burn uh, fossil fuel, you're getting CO2 and water vapor are the main things. Then there are some other things like nitric oxide and all these other dangerous things. But primarily you get water vapor and carbon dioxide as, your, as what the long chain carbon, hy hydrocarbons mm -hmm. are burned into. Okay, so, um, so at, at high elevation, water vapor is also a greenhouse gas. Uh -huh. So, you, oh, I get it. It's not good for the, for the climate situation to be doing all this military operation. So in the resolution last night, there were, I believe there was a call for the uh, military, I guess, to change its mission here is that correct that's correct and what would the ch what would the change amount to if we were successful so what they were what the resolution asked for is a mission for the national guard that would that's not peaceful? that would not be harmful uh -huh. to the population uh -huh. and there are numerous air force missions that could be conducted in a city where you wouldn't ha harm the population among them are non-flying missions. Mm -hmm, right. If you're not taking off and landing with any kind of plane, you're, and you're working on a computer to do, to defend against cyber attacks, for example. So there, are, there's a lot of uh, worry that the um, some enemy will do something that will interrupt mm -hmm. the power grid, right? And so you want to become able to defend against interruptions of the power grid. There's also natural causes where you can have interruption of the power. For example, the sun right. can have these emissions that if they hit the earth, they can do tremendous damage to the power grid. Okay, so being able to defend against these uh, kinds of attacks, and then of course you have electronic warfare or electronic um, defense against mm -hmm. missiles. You can impair their ability to target, their, to reach their target, mm -hmm. and send them off in some other direction where they would land far away from any target. Mm -hmm. So there's those kinds of missions. And then there are all kinds of flying missions that are within the noise level 
And they're very similar to commercial aircraft. Yes, that's what I was thinking. So yeah. the, the medical evacuation mm -hmm. and transport planes and different kinds of aircraft are well within the FAA regulations. In the, back in the 1970s, the FAA started uh, to put its attention into protecting people who live near civilian airports. Like, for example, I grew up um, in, the air, in Far Rockaway, New York, which is in the flight path from what's now called JFK Airport, mm -hmm. one of the largest airports right, in the world. In the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And there was a plane flying over our house every minute, mm. taking off from a certain runway there and coming right over our house. And so I, maybe that uh, might account for my interest in this because as a child growing up uh, in the flight path of, it was then called Idlewild. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. Um, it, you know, this isn't this isn't good for your cognitive development. Mm -hmm. You're not, and it was just um, propeller planes at first, and then the first jet planes. Well, by the time the '70s came, there were so many millions of people living in areas around airports that were being subje subjected to this noise that the the FAA established started to establish standards uh -huh. for aircraft and. Manufacturers of the aircraft had to meet the noise standards. We're up to the fifth stage of these gradually quieter and quieter standards now. But even the first standard, the F-35, would fail by a big margin. So the, there's 90% of the people, according to the FAA, 90% of the people who are living in high noise zones mm -hmm. because of these high noise civilian aircraft are no longer in those noise yes, zones. Yes, right. They moved. They've made, they banned stage one and stage two aircraft. Mm -hmm. So any airplane that is operating anywhere in the United States that's civilian must be at least a stage three. And it's much quieter than the F-35. Right. The F-35 would not meet that standard. Now, why is it that people who are living in my old house in Far Rockaway are not being subjected to noise at the level of the F-35, but we are? God because knows. the only aircraft that's operating at Burlington Airport that's noisy like the F-35 is the F-35. Uh -huh. What, what is it that we, we, they, we can't get in it, all our aircraft to meet the FAA standard for safety? The whole point of the FAA is so that people can be safe, so children can grow up without this impairment. So what, we're exceptional? There's something that we, we don't deserve because we're Vermonters? Why shouldn't the FAA standard be the standard for the Burlington International Airport. And you know what? what? The city of Burlington can establish it as a state. Is that what the point was last night? No. Okay. No. But we he don't have much time left, so. Okay, so this is an, I'll just say this, that we were, we're starting off asking the congressional delegation to do its job to protect the people. And they can do it. They can call up the Air Force and say, get us another mission. And the Air Force wants to do it because they want to conform and comply with their own discipline not to hurt civilians for no good reason, right? So I think that would happen pretty quickly if the uh, congressional delegation said, okay, let's get and a different mission. And that was the resolution last night. And that was the resolution last night. And it passed. And it passed yeah. 11 to 1. And it's going to go to other cities. In who, is it? Yeah. Terrific. South Burlington is going to consider it. Winooski is going to consider it. Maybe some of the other towns will as well. Okay. But, um, but if nothing happens and they continue to neglect and, and the depraved neglect these congressional delegation members keep wanting to hurt children. Okay, so the city has the power under the FAA rule right. and many other cities around the country who own an airport.
can evict them? They don't have to evict them. They can set a standard uh -huh, good. that all operators of aircraft must meet. And this is all laid out by the FAA in their regulations, in their grant assurances. And the only reason we haven't been able to do it until now is because we had a mayor who loved the F-35 more than he loved the children. And we have children. a new mayor. And now we have a new mayor who is open. Seriously yes. wants to abolish the F-35 at this airport. She knows how bad it is, and she wa she was on a program right here on Channel 17 uh, um, during the election campaign, and we talked about it. And I'm Jimmy. We don't have. I can't congratulate you enough. So the city passed this resolution, 11 to 1 last night. 11 to 1. And this is a huge victory after many years of terrific work on behalf of the citizens of Burlington. It's a step. It's a yes, step it's in a the step, right direction. But let's call it at least a partial victory. Yeah, yeah, okay? right. And you did it with Roseanne Greco and many other citizen activists who have been at this for years. It was amazing to yeah. hear everybody speak. It Great. was truly inspiring. And, so, and it's going to be online. It's Channel 17 again who's uh, well, posting Well, let's that. thank Channel 17. Right. Okay, Th thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll be back, our uh, viewers, next month. But thanks again, Jimmy, and congratulations. Thank you.